just want to thank the organizers, Aspi, and you. And let's give a big hand to Aspi. You're an amazing man. I wasn't born here. I'm an immigrant to this country. My parents took me here when I was four years old. My mother was born in the UK. I was born in the UK. My father was born in the island of Cyprus in the Mediterranean. My mother's mother was born in Syria. So why did they take this chance? Why did they want their son to be a Canadian? Well, I think you all know the answer to that question. They wanted a better life for themselves and their children. That's the Canadian dream. That's what everybody in this room has experienced either for yourselves or for your children. That's the Canadian dream. And that manifests itself in a number of different ways. You believe in making sure that your household has a balanced budget. Because if it doesn't balance, then you've got to make some hard choices about how you can help your kids or Make sure you can get a new car when you need a new car, those kinds of things. It doesn't happen automatically. As Justin Trudeau once famously said, but, you know, he said, budgets balance themselves. Well, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way in your household. It doesn't work that way in the nation. But that's one of your values. That's one of our values. And you also believe that if you work hard, stay within the rules, you can get ahead. You can earn the money for yourselves and for your kids. And that's an important Canadian value. And that requires a reasonably low rate of taxation. When the government keeps taking more and more and more, it's tougher for people like us to make ends meet. That's a Canadian value. We also believe that Canadian foreign policy and our, and our defense policy should protect Canadian interests and values too, around the world. Canadians believe in human rights. Canadians believe that we should be in alliance with our allies when somebody is threatening those values. My question to you is very similar to the previous question. Uh, there is a genocide going on in Pakistan which has not been recognized uh, on any forum in the world. Uh, Pakistan has made its way to the international news many times and we hear words like terrorism, we hear words like sectarianism, um, but we have never heard the word genocide. What is going on is a very targeted, focused assassination of Christian communities of Ahmadi communities and of Shia communities. Uh, important to, uh, to itemize those issues. I have met with the Ahmadi community so far, uh, and I uh, will continue with my outreach. But uh, I think what we've got to do is raise the level of consciousness of this in our community. And part of how we do that as parliamentarians is have special hearings so that people like yourself can give the testimony, and this becomes a matter of public record, and then I can ask questions in the House of Commons, and then it gets to be part of the news cycle, and it just raises these issues. And so I'd be happy to work with you in that regard. And we've got some great uh, MPs that I work with, like David Anderson, who's our religious freedoms critic. And we were talking about the Office of Religious Freedoms being closing down, which is very unfortunate. And uh, so I work with David Anderson, and I, I work with Peter Kent, who's my deputy critic for foreign affairs, and Dean Allison, who's our MP in, uh, in Niagara region, who's uh, the vice chair of the foreign affairs committee. So we've got a good team that can work with you and with other groups that are feeling that they're not being listened to by the government. Long years have passed by. There are certain communities that I can't even step into dressed like this because I'm from Nepal. Now please tell me where am I going to go live 
the freedom way that I wanted to live, when all these people with that kind of mentality are coming right. here and forming communities. Right. I feel for the whole world. Yes. she will not be able to go to school because the way our country and everything is going I feel for you that you guys want to feel for all the cultures and I, I'm not like I I don't believe in one religion my family has all religions in them Muslims Christians Parsis I believe for all of them but what I stand here for is freedom and freedom for women because I don't see that we get we get name changed every single day Okay, like doesn't matter where we are, which profession we are, we are still treated as second class citizens. So what are you going to do about it and what's the future of it? Very good. The thing that I don't understand is, you know, I'm a conservative obviously. We have liberals and NDP who claim that they are for uh, the freedoms for women, and yet they turn a blind eye to this kind of activity, which is completely antithetical to the freedom of women. And to me, there's no middle ground on this. We either have a value in our society where women are treated equally, or we do not. And we have to uphold that value, and obviously there are times when we have to fight for that. And so I, I agree with you. I, you know, I, look, every religion has the right to practice its religion. I get that. At the same time, you cannot oppress Canadians. You're not allowed to do that. So this to me is a, this to me is a real line, and, and we've got to be clear-headed about this. We didn't lose. And I'll tell you why we didn't lose. This election gave us a chance to become bigger, better, stronger. Well, this was an amazing uh, session with uh, some uh, great feedback, some ideas about how we can protect human rights around the world, the situation in Pakistan, the situation with ISIS, uh, uh, and uh, there's a lot of great community involvement here and great community knowledge uh, of the situation uh, for human rights, not only in Canada, but, but around the world. So I will take the, all this back to Parliament with me and make sure that these views are heard and they are respected and listened to. Good evening, Sat Sarikal, Adab, Namaste. Thank you everybody for being here for the meet and greet event of Honorable Tony Clement, who is a member of Parliament at the same time, who is a critic for foreign affairs. We are grateful to each and every one. Nearly 25 community activist leaders are here to support us and our, and our Conservative Party of Canada. Thank you very much for the media support from your end. Thank you. Number one multicultural channel. This is Tag TV.